Well, 2018 has been a year of anti-establishment fervor and demands for radical change worldwide from both the left and the right. We've seen this trend really come to life in Germany, Italy, and Sweden. And we've seen Mexico, Brazil, and Pakistan elect populist leaders. So what does it mean for international politics in the year ahead? For more on this, we want to bring in CBSN contributor Willis Sparks. He writes for Signal, a newsletter produced by G Zero Media. Willis, in today's newsletter, your big story of the year, which you write focuses on throwing bums out. What can you tell us? If we go back two years in this country, there's a lot of differences that we could highlight between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Everybody's got strong feelings about both of these people. But one huge difference is that Hillary Clinton is the symbol of the political establishment. For better and for worse, she talks like a politician, she moves like a politician, and Donald Trump is as close to the opposite of that as we've ever seen in modern American politics. So my message is, this is not just an American phenomenon. In fact, in the two years since then, every single major election in the world has seen the establishment parties and candidates thrown off a cliff in favor of wild cards. We saw it last year in France. We saw Germany trending that way at the end of last year. Now let's just look back at the year that we're finishing now, 2018. In Italy, they now have a coalition government run by a protest party founded by a professional comedian nine years ago and a rebranded separatist party, which only existed a few years ago to argue that Italy's northern provinces should leave Italy. Okay, um, Mexico, you mentioned um, Lopez Obrador is now the president of Mexico, the first leftist candidate in eight decades in Mexico, promising transformational change in that country. In Brazil, they've gone to the right. J Jair Bolsonaro, a, a former army officer, uh, has been elected to clean up corruption and crime, two of the really big problems in Brazil. And even in Pakistan, there's two big political dynasties that have dominated that country for decades. They're gone in favor of a new guy who's famous mainly because he was the captain of Pakistan's World Cup winning cricket team in <laughs> 1992. You've got country after country in every region of the world looking at establishment figures unhappy with government and government's ability to provide them with what they want, saying, get all these people out of here and give me a brand new face, someone that I've never seen before. So the, the, the countries that you just listed had recent elections, right. but some other countries had elections like us a few years. It's been a few years now. So we have, you know, our current president. I was thinking about Duterte in the Philippines, another right. character oh, like that, perfect right? Perfect example. And of course in France as well. So these people have had a couple of years to prove their worth. And you say that the big question moving forward for 2019 is, what happens if they do not bring the change that they have promised? If you embody change, if people voted for you because they wanted something completely different, they also have specific things they want. They want government to deliver for them on whatever the issue is in that country. So as you say, what happens when someone elected to bring change doesn't deliver? Let's look at France. In 2017, they elected a guy, Emmanuel Macron, who, like Donald Trump, had never run for office before he was elected president of the republic. The traditional parties in France, center right and center left, finished in third and fifth place in the first round of voting. So now we got the new guy. Where's the new guy now, a year and a half later? He has an approval rating of 23%. I've never even heard of such a thing 23%. For a yeah. He would love to have Donald Trump's approval exactly. <laughs> And we've got these protests going on. They're in the streets of France every weekend, the Gilets Jaunes, the Yellow Vest protests, that started because one of the reforms Mr. Macron wanted was to raise the diesel tax a little bit to help government save more money to, to move toward a more balanced budget. The protests started in response to that, but as is the case with protests, it starts about something small and it becomes much larger. It goes nationwide. Because he gave and, them that and they're still in the streets. And again, we, we've got more elections coming this year. Africa's two largest economies, South Africa and Nigeria, are both going to have contested elections. India is going to have an election next, late next year. Indonesia, very important country, is going to have an election. But let's bring it back to the United States. We started with Trump and Hillary Clinton. We're about to see 973 Democrats announced for, announce for president in the next few weeks. I mean, <laughs> it's we, we think that 2020 is an election year. Right. Forget it. 2019 is an election year. 
Democrats get subpoena power in the House on January 3rd. Mm -hmm. Robert Mueller is some at some point this year, maybe sooner, maybe later, is going to wrap up his investigation. We're headed for an ugly, toxic, bitter year in Washington mm -hmm. that goes beyond what we've seen in the past. Donald Trump has been expected to deliver certain things. We're seeing this fight over the border wall yes. now. So we're moving into an election year in the United States. And again, it's a global trend, but we're going to have a front row seat to this over the next two years, really, in the United States. Well, we're so happy we have you then, because we're going to be talking about <laughs> it a lot. Willis, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, you can check out all of these stories and more by subscribing to the Signal newsletter. Sign up for it at g0media.com.